the magic coin is going to make everything all better. You have got to be kidding me. Anybody that hadn't read this or heard about it, we're going to go through this. This is what we're paying these guys for. This is what they're making big bucks for off you and me. So they can come up with ignorant second grade ideas that are totally irresponsible. The treasury is being urged by using its power to mint a single one one coin and put a one trillion dollar value on that coin to be made of platinum. Now, anybody in their right mind knows that the single coin with just a sparse amount of platinum that it is is not worth a trillion dollars. So let's let's read on. Originally floated last year in July of 2011, lawmakers deadlocked over what had been until then a routine vote on the borrowing authority of the government. Now we're going to get into that argument again about the borrowing limit and upping it, which Obama has already said he will not negotiate on. I believe he's threatened to invoke the 14th Amendment. In the last week, a petition on the White House website gained more than 6,000 signatures in support of this magic coin idea. Congressman from Oregon introduced a bill banning the magic coin. Ooh, Nobel Prize winning econom economist Paul Krugman has endorsed the idea. Oh, and his words are, by minting a trillion dollar coin, then depositing it at the Fed, the Treasury could acquire enough cash to sidestep the debt ceiling, while doing no economic harm at all. In theory, the idea has a lot going for it. What? What? A Nobel Prize winning economist just said by minting a trillion dollar coin, which is not worth a trillion dollars, you would be able to acquire enough cash based upon this coin that says a trillion on it, but it's not worth a plug nickel. Magic coiners say their goal is to eliminate the repeat of the July 2011 self-induced default by the Treasury. And you got a debt ceiling go around. And they're claiming it affected the stock market and crashed it. Cost the U.S. AAA credit rating. Produce still ticking fiscal cliff budget time bomb. That sat business and consumer confidence for months. Quit spending the money. That's the thing. They're blowing our money. There is no limit on their spending. So they just keep wanting a limit on how much more can we borrow because we're going to keep spending it all. We are again, the government bumped up against a credit limit, expected to hit sometime in February next month. Exact date hard to nail down because just like a household having trouble paying the bills, well, the Treasury can juggle a bit. Rob Peter and pay Paul for a while. Contrary to its critics' fears, the magic platinum coin would not fuel runaway government spending. If the idea worked, the Treasury would only be allowed to write checks against the coin, which is worthless but says a trillion, against the coin for expenses already authorized by Congress, no more. Nor would minting of the magic co coin spark runaway inflation. The coin wouldn't be introduced into circulation, so it wouldn't devaluate the bills and coins already flowing through the economy. So far, so good. Actually, creating a coin, though, wouldn't be as simple as the proponents would have you believe. For starters, there isn't enough platinum in the world, either above or below ground, to create a trillion dollar coin. Well, then I guess it's not a trillion dollar coin, no matter what they print on it, huh? 
And then it goes on to talk about 3.2 million ounces of platinum in the world. Current market price about 1,500. That comes to about one half of a trillion, 500 billion. Enough for half a magic coin. And they claim this is why we'll never return to the gold standard because there's not enough gold to back the paper wealth created since the U.S. closed its gold window for good in '71. I'm not sure I buy that. I'm not sure I believe that. But we are so in debt, it may be possible, but I think they got more gold than what they talk about there. Even if you look, uh, scrounged up enough platinum, you'd be looking up at a really big coin at $1,500 an ounce. You need a little more than 40 million pounds of platinum. <laughs> works out to about more than a thousand cubic yards of the precious metal. But the magic of this trick, says backers, is that the coin can be any size you like. It doesn't even have to be worth a trillion. Thanks to an obscure clause in the U.S. Code, specifically Title 31, Subtitle 4, Chapter 51, Subchapter 2, Paragraph 511, uh, 5112K. Geithner can direct the U.S. Mint to create a platinum coin in any denomination so he chooses at any time he likes, no questions asked. That means it could be as small as a dime, which works out to about an ounce of platinum worth 1500 But if the government declared the coin worth a trillion, it still wouldn't get very far trying to pay its bills with it. And this guy, he's got a little bit of a brain there. If the government made a wooden nickel and carved a trillion on it and hands it to you, are you going to take it? This is where the Treasury pulls off its indigent, ingenious, excuse me, slate of hand. According to the platinum coin crowd, Geithner simply sends a coin to the Federal Reserve and swaps it for cash. Just like the paper securities the Fed routinely buys from the Treasury. Presto! Uncle Sam now has another trillion in cash to pay the bills. Fire up those printing presses. To be sure, the Fed has pulled some unusual stunts since the fiscal collapse, financial collapse of 2008. Mopping up billions of dollars worth of toxic mortgage bonds to clear them out of the system. To do that, Bernanke and his colleagues had to reach deep into the 90-year-old Federal Reserve Act to a preciously, previously unused clause that gives the central bank broad powers under exigent circumstances. The rule under Section 13, Paragraph 3 says only the Fed can lend out notes, drafts, and bills of exchange. Nothing in there about taking platinum as collateral. When asked to clarify whether the central bank would accept the magic platinum coin, the Fed officials said they were unable to comment on hypothetical cases. If the Fed won't take the coin, debt ceiling magicians have one more trick up their sleeve. And here it comes. Under the 14th Amendment, they argued the President has the power to declare the entire borrowing limit process unconstitutional. And what was King Obama? Did he not uh, teach constitutional law? That idea also came up during the last debt ceiling debacle. Dismissed as too extreme. About a year and a half ago, oh, excuse me, some 18 months later, the idea isn't so radical to some congressional leaders, including, oh my God, Nancy Pelosi. I were president, I'd use the 14th Amendment, which says a debt of the U.S. will always be paid. Under this plan, the Treasury would simply continue churning out paper debt, sell it to the investors, use the cash to pay its bills. But it's not at all clear the investors would go along with the idea. Well, well, well. They're still playing the same game. The government, any times they want to, will print paper money, and as much of it as they want to to pay their bills. You print more paper money and gets into circulation, that lowers the value of the money that we pay our bills with. But see, they're not concerned with you and me paying our bills, actually. Now are they? I thought that this 
the fact that this would even get out of a private conversation and make it into the media or the television or anything it's ridiculous and surely this is just out here so that we can laugh at it I mean because there there can't be a snowball chance in Hades that this is actually going to come to to pass right well, what do you guys think of the magic coin huh you think it's as ignorant as I do oh hey <clears throat> who saw the debate between Pierce Morgan and Alex Jones I, I have to say I thoroughly enjoyed that I do not like Pierce Morgan I think he's a pompous a pompous ass pardon my French he thinks he's smarter than everybody else he talks down to people and hey AJ went off you know he got loud and boisterous that's his personality when he's fired up for a while there I thought it was just theatrical put on for show but uh... I actually think that uh... maybe there was a little reality there to it so that's the big topic you got hardball Chris Matthews I can't stand him either you got a whole bunch of them talking about this gun control y'all need to go over to PWIT site he had an interesting uh, series of videos about the Google cache and the date of the posting about the Sandy Hook shooting uh, the dates didn't match up in the cache and apparently the dates are something that you can't change apparently from what he's found if I got it right you can change the title and everything but you can't change the tweet whenever it's tweeted the date so the date of the posting was predated before the Sandy Hook shooting and I'll say that again that's my friend Patrick PWIT you need any help finding it let me know I'll hook you up with him but it was food for thought and it makes you wonder and from what I'm understanding there's a lot of video footage that has not been shown to us I don't know how they know there's a lot of video footage but some of the higher ups are saying that they have not released a lot of video footage and that makes them think they're hiding something about that so I'll try to find some more stuff to bring you maybe some ignorant things that we're paying high dollar for with our congressional leaders but there's so many of those things I'd really have to choose from amongst a whole majority of topics to put up a video oh we'll see I'll let you go God bless you all hope you have a good day tomorrow